We're finally getting some AMD RDNA 3 performance rumors, and to be clear, this is rumors, although it is from our favorite uh, Digimon over on Twitter, Greymon55, who ha has been a, a you know well-established player in the AMD uh, leaks and rumors market for a while now. It looks like my microphone's in the, in the video shot. Let me raise that up out of the way. Anyway, so Greymon55 is saying that some AIBs have already got the chips and are testing them, which means if they're testing them, we should be able to see some kind of performance numbers. Um, he's being quoted as replying with two times rasterized performance. And then when questioned on ray tracing two, he's saying more. So that's where the two times rasterized performance and more than two times ray tracing performance numbers come from. However, he's not actually telling us compared to what. Are we talking about compared to the 6900 XT? Are we talking about compared to the 6950 XT? I mean, those aren't, um, those aren't, uh, is too far apart, right? 6% performance difference, but it is a small thing. And also is the two times performance uh, difference what we're seeing typically, or is it what we're seeing, you know, um, in a best case scenario? Now, either way, a 6900 XT, if its performance doubled on average, it would be well ahead of an RTX 4090. Although personally, I would rein in my expectations and say that, you know, maybe there are some games getting a two times performance lift, but I wouldn't expect that to be the average. But this does seem to imply that if this is anywhere near true, that at least the rasterized performance of the 6900 XT could be very competitive with the 4090. And again, this is the relative performance from Tech Power Up. Uh, it's, it's on average, individual games, sometimes the 4090 would be significantly ahead of this, uh, sometimes less. But then in ray tracing performance again, I even a two times performance uplift, I don't think would put the 69, uh, you know, the 7900 XT, if we want to call it that, uh, competitive with the 4090. Now it's hard to judge ray tracing uplifts on something like calling it more than two times. Because as I've tested a lot of uh, my GPU comparisons, AMD's ray tracing performance is at different levels compared to NVIDIA, depending on which type of ray tracing is being enabled um, and in which game. Because for example, in Cyberpunk, if you do the ray traced local shadows, AMD you know, takes a performance hit and does fall off compared to their NVIDIA competitors, but not as badly as they do when you enable ray traced reflections in that game. So it really, I think, depends on the ray tracing workload. So doing two times from a very different number, depending on the game and the type of ray tracing we're looking at, is very different. But I would say that two times the ray tracing performance uh, would at least put it more competitive with uh, NVIDIA's previous generation with Ampere. Now, um, the, the other thing that we're seeing claimed here is regarding the TBP. So replying to his own post about AIBs getting the chips and testing them, saying references TBP is amazing. So talking about the, the board power. And this would go along with some quotes we've seen from AMD's SVP and product technology architect at Tom's Hardware. Here was the uh, original article, but I'm, I'm here uh, seeing the quote in um, this WCCF tech article here. But uh, he was stating that they're seeing a lot of performance per watt uh, gains, but that performance you know, overall is king. So he's saying that even if their designs are more power efficient, that doesn't mean you don't push power levels up if competition is doing the same thing. It's just that they'll have to push them up a lot higher than we will. So AMD, at least at this time, this was a month or so ago, um, was claiming that they would their competition would have to push power higher than they will. Uh, AMD has also uh, given us slides claiming a greater than 50% performance per watt versus RDNA 2. Now I've mentioned before that that is a difficult to use comparison because efficiency is on a curve. It doesn't mean that take any GPU at any power level and put it on this new architecture and it will see 50% better performance at that power. There's places in the power curve where that's probably you know going to occur. But if you then push power levels, like they said that they, they could be doing, um, if you push power levels past that most efficient point, you might no longer see the 50% performance per watt uplift. But if we put it this way, 
if we allow for taking the 6900 XT and basically taking your 7900 XT at the same wattage and 50% more powerful, uh, obviously it might not actually be at that wattage, but that would at least get you close to 4090 and then push the power levels right and then maybe you are now uh, past this point. So overall, none of this seems um, completely out of line. Although I will say, you know, AMD is not on as good of a process node as NVIDIA. And NVIDIA saw a huge process node advantage, uh, you know, gen to gen by going from Samsung's eight nanometer process with Ampere and jumping to the, uh, what is it, the 4N process, I think. Uh, hopefully I'm not getting that, <laughs> that wrong here. Um, or it's, it's like an advanced version of this 5N N node. So I think that we're gonna be trading from AMD having the process node advantage previously to I think having a process load no, di slight one, disadvantage this gen around. So I don't know, I, I, that made me question whether AMD would be able to take this kind of a jump, but Greymon55 are, uh, is, is our trusty Digimon over here. So let's see what happens on November 3rd. And um, I'm pretty interested to see if AMD is able to compete here. That's not the article I was looking for. Now, speaking of competing, Intel, is showing off, now this is kind of leaked. I'll, let me just show you the slide. So we're seeing a screenshot of uh, the i9-13900K. Uh, looks like it's at some kind of a tech uh, event, you know, uh, with Intel showing off their leadership gaming performance. This is the 13900K versus the Ryzen 9 7950X. So this has not been officially released um, yet, but we are seeing this photo of it, which, and you know, photos can be photoshopped, but um, this looks fairly standard. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be true. And in these games, it's seeing in like Arcageddon, it's basically a tie with a 1% loss, but then showing a performance advantage um, in a number of other games. Again, this is not every game, and it's also not a huge advantage, but I mean, 22% in Rift Breaker, but you know, a lot of other games, uh, being more like 10 or 11%. Now they're also showing uh, a leap in performance for content creation. And they're showing, you know, it honestly looks pretty close on par in a whole bunch of these, 3% loss, 4% win in AutoCAD, 16% uh, jump in what looks like Autodesk something or other model creation. Anyway, so it'll be interesting to see what we get from the 13900K flagship. Um, now, in some kind of uh, related notes here, they're comparing against the 7950X. Now, I'm seeing over at Tech Power Up, and I haven't had a chance to fully dig into this, but they're saying that they've seen as much as a 10% increase in gaming performance by actually disabling one of the CCDs of chips, and this is in Windows 11, uh, 22H2. So that's pretty interesting because if it's true that this is a 22, uh, you know, around a 10% jump, now that might be in only certain games, but I'm just wondering if that could be impacting performance versus the 7950X here. Just throwing that out there. I'm also just throwing this out here. If you have a 7950X, hey, something to think about. And I think this could be something that could use more testing um, uh, and, and see, see what comes of that. Now, speaking of more testing, how about AV1 decoding tested on Intel's Arc GPUs, but also up against um, uh, NVIDIA's RTX 4090, which has um, decoding. And this was done looking like using an uh, 8K 60 FPS video, trying to decode that through YouTube. And this is done over at CapFrameX. And in these results, it was showing um, the uh, the uh, uh, Intel Arc GPU actually slight, uh, performing better in the AV1 decode than the 4090. Um, and of course, both of them outperforming the uh, you know previous generations, uh, specifically looks like AMD's RX 6800 XT was struggling a bit with the 8K video decoding. Uh, so uh, anyway, so interesting stuff, although AMD's new GPUs should give them better um, uh, AV1 uh, video decoding abilities and encoding. Now, also in terms of the 13900K, I meant to actually do this one before the one we just looked at, but whatever. Um, <laughs> we are seeing enthusiastic citizen on the Billy Billy forums, and he has had chips ahead of time in the past, and these chips are out there and available for testing at the moment. So um, this could be true. 
Uh, basically claiming that, uh, I think they might do a, a, a chart here with some of these results on this WCCF Tech article, showing the uh, i9-13900K at its unlimited power setting, and this is in Cinebench R23, and it is beating the 7950X. Uh, it's also beating itself at stock settings, and at stock settings, it was actually losing to the 7950X, but then dialing it all the way back to 80 watts, um, actually still puts it on level with the 12900K, which is kind of interesting at least to take a look at. Um, so anyway, it looks like, well, again, that we're talking about efficiency curves here. When you push these things way past their efficiency curves, they do gain more performance, but at a definite cost, and you can still get a lot of performance dialing back to much more efficient uh, power levels, which can be interesting. Now, uh, in speaking of CPUs and their sales, it's looking like AMD is lowering the Ryzen 7000 Zen 4 CPU production plan due to the PC market de decline. Their AM5 platform and chips are not selling super well. It looks like the 7900X has been their best seller so far. And we're seeing uh, tweets, for example, uh, like from Tech Epiphany here, uh, comparing that uh, the retail sales uh, week and um, you know we can see AMD here overall actually outselling Intel in these statistics, uh, although the overall revenue is lower there, so it looks like maybe Intel was selling more expensive chips, and I think that's the whole thing here. When they break it down by platform, it looks like AM4 sold 1,970 here, uh, whereas AM5, 300, <laughs> okay? <laughs> So that is a big difference between the older AM4 and the AM5. Again, I really hope that we see um, cheaper motherboards, cheaper RAM get in there. But overall, I mean, the AM4 platform is still selling and it's selling, uh, it, it's really good value gaming. I mean, like your 5600 uh, CPU offers some really good gaming performance and there's cheap motherboards available. Now, there's been some interesting uh, interview here with Pat Gelsinger at The Verge, uh, talking with Intel, a lot of stuff. This is a long article. But one of the interesting things that's getting highlighted uh, is talking about um, speaking with a number of CEOs from Fabulous Companies uh, when they were at the Ohio site. Now, Fabulous Companies could include like AMD, for example, and NVIDIA. And uh, he, I guess, speaking to these other CEOs was saying like, hey, that fab module right over there, I wanna put your logo on it and I wanna say it was made here. And the interviewer uh, at The Verge asks, you know, wait, you're gonna put an AMD logo on the side of an Intel fab? And he says, hey, if they, if they choose to manufacture with us, I would be thrilled to do that. Um, so anyway, interesting. So I guess uh, Intel CEO is open to uh, doing fab business for the, um, their competitors like uh, AMD and Nvidia. Now uh, he's also saying that um, he, you know, you know, AMD. He, they're interested in competing at the absolute highest level, and basically just more saying, "Hey, we're here to win in this space. M make no mistakes about it. We're going to build the fastest, highest performance computers in the world, the fastest GPUs in the world, and the fastest discrete GPUs in the world." Uh, so anyway, it's looking like, according to Intel CEO, there's still, you know, the, there's those rumors about, you know, are we going to see Intel Arc GPUs disappear? With, you know, were they a failure? All of that. And it's looking like, again, the CEO doubled down on, we're going to make the fastest GPUs in the world. That's their goal. They want to keep going with that. At least that's what they're stating. Now, speaking of fabs, it's looking like TMS, TSMC's three nanometer production a delay is being highlighted um, by Korean me media to say that Samsung's three nanometer is up and running faster. Now this delay seems to just be coming down to uh, an earning call from TSMC where they stated that three nanometer production is on track for volume production later this quarter. Um, and this according to Business Korea is an admission that the process has been delayed because it cites earlier reports that uh, claimed that TSMC had planned on production in the third quarter, so rather than the fourth. Anyway, it doesn't seem like a massive delay to me, but I, I don't know. Anyway, um, Intel Arc GPUs, uh, uh, seems like they have a solution for high idle power. Um, so it looks like the idle power was a lot higher than a lot of people would want, going up to maybe even 41 watts. 
Uh, looks like they're staying, stating some uh, BIOS changes and setting changes you could make to help improve this situation. So if you have an Arc GPU, I have one, but I haven't got a chance to test it yet. <laughs> Testing my 4090 first and all that. Anyway, um, this could be something you'd be interested in looking into. Now, uh, NVIDIA's Titan Ada is reportedly not planned. Now, this is coming from our even more widely reported on uh, hardware leaker, uh, Copite7Kimi, saying we won't see a Titan of Ada Lovelace. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see a 4090 Ti. That's what we're all really expecting, but it's looking like no Titan incoming. Now, that makes us wonder, is, is the Titan branding just kind of dead now? Uh, we didn't see one with the 3000 series, and now it's looking like, if this rumor is true, uh, we will uh, not be seeing one from uh, from the 4000 series as well. But again, the 4090 Ti is definitely still rumored and should have 11% um, more CUDA cores than the 4090. And if you also bump up the power and the memory bandwidth, you could get even more than an 11% performance gain between the two. Um, now, let's follow up on, I reported with the 4080 12 gigabyte getting unlaunched. Um, and then after I did my video, there were some other videos, including from Gamers Nexus, and he's saying that he was able to talk to some board partners and say that at least the packaging costs, because, you know, boxes already say 40, 80, 12 gigabyte on them, right? Uh, at least the packaging costs should be able to be reimbursed. I would hope that other losses would get um, reimbursed as well, but we didn't have any specific information on that, but thought I'd follow up there and say, you know, I hoped that NVIDIA would help pay for that. It looks like they're at least helping with some of it. Now, a lot of people have been very interested in a 90 degree angle uh, power adapter for the 4090, right? Because uh, it, it's, uh, you know, when it sticks straight out there and wraps around, it's kind of ugly. You worry about the, uh, you know, if it feels kind of janky when it bends, because uh, it usually does have to bend. Well, it's looking like Cable Mod is going to be uh, helping us out here with a 90 degree angle power adapter. This isn't quite ready yet. You can't buy it today, uh, but it should be incoming soon. Um, so, you know, keep your eye out there if you are interested. And it looks like um, the pre sale will start on October 31st, and you can sign up for that over at Cable Mod. So, this could be an interesting thing for people doing some builds with these high end cards. Now, in my video uh, talking about the performance gains of the 522.25 driver update, a lot of people were saying that, ah, this causes a glitch in Cyberpunk's map that appears to be true, and there does seem to be a hot fix that will be patched into the game uh, soon, but it's looking like um, over on NVIDIA's website, there is an actual downloadable fix for this. If you download the GeForce 3D Profile Manager, now I have not tested this myself and it looks a little bit annoying to deal with, um, but it looks like there is a fix for this published by NVIDIA. So it looks like you, uh, you could um, try to solve that problem yourself if you want to stay on these drivers. Now, last things I want to talk about is uh, Gotham Knights recommended PC requirements are out now. I'd already reported on the minimum requirements, but the recommended requirements, um, well, I guess I'll re-report on the minimums. So the minimums were saying you need a 1660 Ti or AMD RX 590 for 1080p 60fps low quality with eight gigabytes of RAM and um, an i5-9600K or Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. They're now giving us the recommended uh, requirements, which are targeting 60 FPS at the high settings. It's unclear whether there will also maybe be an ultra setting, right? So this might not even be maxing it out at 1080p. And they're claiming an RTX 2070 or RX 5700 XT in order to get that. So I, I'd still consider that uh, fairly high performance demands. And if we wanna look at this going from the low quality settings to the high quality settings at 1080p 60 FPS, uh, let's look at the scaling from a 1660 Ti to an RTX 2070. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and grab, grab ourselves a 1660 Ti as a baseline. Again, this relative performance is on average from tech power up reviews. It's not necessarily perfect in every game. 
Uh, so the 2070 is looking like about 37% faster on average from the low to the high. So that could, could give us some kind of an idea of the um, scaling difference between the low settings and the high settings. Although using this like that, system requirements aren't usually that precise, guys. So don't read way too much into that. Now, Modern Warfare 2 is getting extended PC requirements list as well as preload info and raids launch date. Um, so the minimum that, that they're listing here for this, you know what, guys? Um, I might have to deal with this in, in another video. I'm just gonna scroll through this here for now. I just looked at the clock and I need to get my kids up and ready for school. So, hey, they're changing the system. They're giving us some system requirements here in, in detail <laughs> that I don't have full time to get into here at the moment. Anyway, I hope all of you have an excellent day.